Welcome back to Yoga Express, your virtual stretch clinic that helps you move the body to still the mind. My name is Banu Suresh. I'm your host for this program. And today we have with us, I have with me right here, Josian Hurd. Josian has been with us in many, many episodes before. Both Josian and I are total yoga addicts. We find any excuse to come here and stretch. Before I go ahead and do a little bit of uh, reintroduction about our program, I'd like you to hear Josiane and ha hear what she has to say about how she might have benefited from this program, any precautions, anything that you need to be careful about. And don't get fooled by Josiane's socks. She has rubber dots underneath. She's very smart. She knows how to be careful. So if you need to wear socks, be careful. Wear something that will give you enough traction on the mat. Josiane, how do you feel so far? We've come a long way. In a couple of days, we're going to finish episode number 200. Wonderful. Going to open a bottle of champagne and <laughs> get a pint of wellness right there. So, yeah, tell me. I do, I do anticipate the, the yoga session because um, it makes me feel so relaxed. It makes right. me feel good. Uh, it straightens my posture. Uh, it helps uh, so, many, uh, so many problems, so many things that I was not... Uh, that was be neglecting a little bit. Right, the right. Posture. Well, other them. things take priority, right? And then and my knees, it my sciatica, it right. my back. It's one. I feel so good. I what you said at the last taping. I remember what you said, and actually, you're right because mm -hmm. I felt that way too when I was practicing every day. We used to have little yoga thons when I lived overseas. You said something about ever since I started stretching mm -hmm. here in the studios, I started noticing that my posture has become erect, and it I'm makes starting you be to be aware of it. Exactly. That's the right word. We develop self-awareness. So viewers at home or at work, just remember, when you're stretching with us, we're not promising any miracles. We will not teach you. We cannot teach you to levitate. We are not going to teach you to you know, fle uh, flex, uh, put your foot behind your neck. We're not going to teach you any magic tricks. All we're going to teach you is to make the most of yourself. You do the best you can. Make the most of what you have. Make the most of what your body can do for you today. Come to terms what, with what you cannot. So just being aware of your body's strengths, being aware of what you can and cannot do. Just acknowledging your weaknesses, being aware of your strengths. And awareness, Josie, and you hit a very, very good mm -hmm. point. Just being aware of you know, everything you do, and this is not just on the mat. It, you know, it just carries over to the rest of our lives, too. I was even stretch in front of the computer. I mean, automatically. <laughs> That's I mean, nice. Uh, just a few seconds. Instinctively, yeah. And on and yeah. off, on and off, like twisting and things like that and bending the leg. And it makes you feel good because you right. get on the same position for a long time. Right. And you feel stiff, you know, you feel rigid. Yeah, after and now that while. you know that we, we, yes. we stretch here so often, you know the tickets. It's, it's, it's you know automatic. How to be I need, safe. Oh, I need to stretch. I need exactly. to stretch. Exactly. Exactly. You know, Josian, there is, um, I wouldn't say there's a stretch, but. There are exercises, quote unquote, for everything in yoga. I had just have an, oh yes, ears too. For the eyes, you have some? Oh, okay. For the eyes too. So when you have, it's called trataka. So you, you know what they call hand gazing? Too. We should do The only thing is because we are stretching for the viewers, what's gonna happen is we're gonna just sit here and watch the candle. It's gonna be good for us, but they need to see some movement. So yeah, they, you, have to, you, have, you have to point with the four point of compass. North, right, east, south, right. West. We can do a little bit towards the end yes. of today's episode. Today's episode is gonna focus on postures for relieving a hypertensive state. So basically something that'll help calm you down. I'm wondering if we should do that today or we're going to do between today, tomorrow and day after, we're going to do three sequences. Yes. Do you want to start with yeah, that? Don't forget the... Yes, I will. <laughs> Thank you. I love that. I love the way you keep me on, on track. So between today, tomorrow, and the day after, we're going to do three sequences. And Josiane's going to help me decide which one should come first. But we're going to do hypertensive postures that help 
uh, relax the body. Posture, oh, so for high, help prevent hypertension, postures that help prevent asthma, and postures, so asthma will be chest openers, and knee benders to help prevent arthritis of the knees. So what happens is, Josie, and, and I think we've discussed this before for any new viewers, what happens is when you bend and unbend the knees, as we grow older, the synovial fluid, the kind of lubrication we have in the knees when we are young, it starts to dry up. It's called synovial fluid. It starts to dry up as we grow older. That's why you hear all those pops and crackles, and that's not Rice Krispies. When you hear all those sounds, that's air pockets. What's happening is we're drying up in the knees. So you want to keep moving, bending and unbending the knees, so you can help increase the flow of synovial mm -hmm. fluid. So that's for arthritis. For asthma, you want to open up the chest because chest muscles start to constrict, so you want to open up the chest. For hypertension, you want slow, undulating motion, motion that will not be too stressful, won't gush, get the uh, blood totally gushing to the head. You'll always have some kind of contact to the floor. So it, it doesn't increase your blood pressure. It helps you helps calm us down. So do you want to do the hypertension one first? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. You know exactly what you want. <laughs> now, before I forget, thanks for reminding me, Josie, and this yoga fitness program is filmed in the studios of Manhattan Neighborhood Network. We air Monday through Friday at 1.30 in the afternoon on Time Warner 57, RCN 84, and Fios 35. That's 1.30 Eastern Time, New York Time. We have an excellent support system for you. Besides this program, we have a website, www.yogaexpress.com. That's Yoga Express without the E, Y-O-G-A-X-P-R-E-S-S. -S. You can see it right there on, the, on your screen. You, we also have a website, yogaexpress.blogspot.com. So that gives you a good sense. That blog has been sort of uh, a little quiet for a while, but we are going to we are reviving our website and we are going to revive the blog as well in the next couple of weeks. Just keep an eye out for it. Now, what we're going to do, I think we have introduced everything. So all we want to do is let you guys know, let, you, let our viewers know that we have a lot of things to help improve your practice at home. We have a book called Yoga Secrets. I'm going to hold it up. Yoga Secrets, Preventing Common Ailments, the 48 Plus Way. It was noted uh, as one of the uh, finalists as the best book for 19, I think it was 19, uh, 2008. It has about 10 ailment specific cards inside. Each of these cards actually help you, um, they give you about 20 postures that help alleviate one common ailment. So we have a whole bunch of them, arthritis, asthma, constipation, diabetes, lumbago, hypertension, lumbago, piles, and sciatica. Piles is the English, British English word for hemorrhoids. Yes. We also have a fridge magnet and a postcard. So we've done enough housekeeping. Come on, Josian, I can't wait to stretch. Are we ready? We're gonna stand up. And viewers at home, feel free, stand up with us. We're gonna start with the hypertensive series today and we will try to exclude the balance postures because it gets stressful. If balance is an issue for you, you don't really want to include it. If you're really supercharged one day and you want to include it in your full sequence, feel free. Okay, let's get our heels together, toes slightly apart, and if you're practicing or stretching with someone else, it's okay, you can walk in front. You can go in front of, yeah, no problem. Just watch out for the wires. <laughs> uh, heels together, toes apart, palms in front of your chest, elbows are raised. So you want to make sure your elbows are nice and alert. Now we have about 20 minutes of practice. So we're going to take you through, hopefully in a flowing motion. Inhale the arms up, overhead. Take a nice deep breath and hold it for just a second. And then what we're going to do, we're going to exhale, dip to the right, and to the left. Exhale, dip to the right. Inhale to the center, exhale to the left. Now, because it is a series sequence that helps you prevent hypertension, you want to go do it a couple more times just to feel the undulating motion. Exhale to the right. Inhale, back to the center. Exhale, to the left. Inhale, to the center. Exhale, and release. Notice how Josiane and I brought our arms down in two different ways. We have new viewers every day, so I want to make sure that you understand. When you bring your arms down, right, your palms come straight down, 
you're actually being very mindful of people around you. So you may have very limited space where you are in your studio, in your office, or at home. You want to be careful you don't hit anyone. That can actually shoot up your blood pressure, so you don't want to offend anyone. I, I think I get too used to the space in the studio, so I bring my arms out the other way, but sometimes I do try to remember that. And it also looks much better bringing your arms down to the front. Now, bring your feet out about six to eight inches apart. Bring, put your brakes on, so bring your toes in. Your toes are in, both the insides of your feet, insides of both your feet are parallel to each other. Ali, we have a spare mat for you. Bring your palms in front of your chest. Your hands are in front of your chest, palms facing down. Victor, you too. Elbows are raised. What we're going to do is we're going to exhale. We'll first take a deep breath in. Then we're going to exhale and swing the right arm out. Keep your hips where they are. Inhale, bring the right arm back in. Exhale to the left. And then bring the left arm back in as we inhale. And then we'll do it a second time, taking our hips with us. And notice the difference. Either way, whichever way you do, the idea is to feel the repetitive motion. That's what helps soothe your body. It soothes your body, calms your mind. So take a deep breath in first. Exhale to the right. Inhale, back to the center. Exhale to the left. Inhale, back to the center. This time, take your hips with you. And let's try that one more time. Exhale to the right. Inhale to the center. Exhale to the left. Inhale back to the center. Exhale and release. We do have a standing posture, the tree posture, but it is a balanced posture. We're going to skip that today. Today we're going to go with all the soft, gentler postures. Let's come into cat position. Josiane loves the cat, and she loves cats as well. She loves a cat position posture as well as loves cats. So watch her closely. What's going to happen in this posture is your body, the torso, moves in a wave-like manner. So you will be inhaling. You'll dip your, the middle part of your torso, your buttocks, and your chest and your chin will come up when you inhale, and your toes will be curled in. When we exhale, we'll arch the back. Toes will be flat and you will get your back nice and rounded. So that way, when we'll do that twice, two rounds. Palms directly below the shoulders, fingers are nicely splayed, toes, your knees are directly below the hips, and your toes are curled in. So you want to hold yourself nice and secure, nice and firm. Inhale, bring the chin and chest up, and lift your buttocks up, dip your torso. Keep your eyes open. Exhale, uncurl your toes, arch your back. Let's try that one more time. Inhale, curl your toes in. Dip your torso. Exhale, uncurl your toes, arch your back. Now, let's come to neutral position. You might notice Josiane dipped really uh, low. And the deeper you go, the more intense your uh, concave stretch. And it's good for you too. It's also the way, you might have noticed, it's the way the cat stretches anyway. So that's good. <laughs> How many cats do you have at Four. home? Four. <laughs> ah, no wonder. You have a lot of practice, Josie, and I'm a bird person. So when we need to fly, I'll take you there. <laughs> OK, let's sit on our heels. So the cat posture is called Marjari. So first we went into Ardha Chandra, which was half moon. We swayed from side to side. Then we went into a posture called Kati Chakra, where we you know, uh, swung our arms out to one side and then the other. That's Kati Chakra, or spinning wheel. And we went into the cat posture, Marjaria, or cat. Now we're going to sit on our heels. We're going to fold over into the rabbit posture. Remember, all of these postures are intended to soothe, calm the mind, and soothe the body. And they're not only for hypertensive, uh, for preventing hypertension. They're all, some of them, help other ailments as well. When you fold over, the lower abdomen compresses on the upper thighs. That's really wonderful for massaging the organs in the lower abdominal region. So that helps prevent constipation, massages this part of the body. So the next posture is Shashank or Rabbit. Toes are flat, the tops of your feet are flat on the ground. Inhale your arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling, take your arms all the way overhead, palms facing in. This time, let's challenge ourselves. We're not, it's not going to be a very um, 
very uh, active posture, but it will be relaxing. But at the same time, I want you to give yourself a little more of a challenge. Use your low back muscles and your lower abdominal muscles to come down and as we come down we're going to attempt to touch our forehead to the floor before our hands come down let's challenge ourselves biceps behind the ears take a deep inhale exhale fold from the hip keep your elbows straight don't don't bring your elbows down to the floor this is not the child posture traditionally in child posture you can have, have your elbows on the floor <coughs> or you could bring your hands by your side. That's a rest posture. This is an active posture. It's called Shashank or Rabbit. And if you need to, you can lift your buttocks a little bit off of the floor. That means you're a rabbit that's ready to shoot off, ready to run. <coughs> a bit of dust today. Now hold it. Keep exhaling. And you know what? I totally forgot. We'll have to do this one more time. I warned everyone to bring the forehead down first and I forgot. <coughs> Put your palms together, inhale, let's come up with a nice straight back, <coughs> excuse me, exhale and release. <clears throat> Just going to take a little sip a little of water, water yes, and help. we'll do it one more time. This time we'll try to touch the forehead to the ground before our arms come down. I did. <coughs> I noticed through the side because of my you, eyes. You said it to you before, so I, I did. I, I did it. mention, and I forgot because I was trying to control my cough. But in just a moment, <laughs> it's a very relaxing. Uh, it is. It's actually a very soothing posture, and it's a little different to the uh, child posture because it's more active. So your elbows, your yeah, arms are straight. Otherwise, the other ones, the arms are more <coughs> retracted. Exactly, and they're retracted and very close to you. Also, we can lift our buttocks. So let's try that one more time. <clears throat> Inhale your arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling, take your arms all the way overhead, palms facing in. Now I'm gonna clasp my fingers across, so my, the fingers of the opposite hands, if, well basically my hands are clasping each other. You can have your index fingers out or your whole palm out as well. Take your biceps behind your ears, exhale, fold from the hip, try to bring your forehead down first. Use your low back muscles. <coughs> all right i'm there now it's okay to bring my palms down palms are flat your elbows are straight out clasp your palms together inhale let's come up exhale and release i love the way you bring that down from the center i i keep forgetting i have to do that i have to learn that it's all about uh, it's all about disciplining ourselves to do it mm -hmm. a certain way. Oh, yeah, I've disciplined myself to do it on the outside. <laughs> <coughs> it's good, it's right. good to show two ways. That is true. That is true. Because not everyone um, may be comfortable bringing down the front. Not everyone may be able to. Mm -hmm. Some people may feel that they want to do this because they want a little more of a stretch on the side. Whichever way is comfortable for you, it's okay. It does not uh, take away from the posture. You still get your stretch. Bring, keep your right leg extended out in front of you. Bend the left leg at the knee. The sole of your left foot, attach that. Attach the sole of your left foot to your inner right thigh and turn your torso to face the extended leg. <coughs> Let's inhale. This posture is called Janu Sirsha, head to knee. So we're gonna attempt to bring the forehead to the knee. That may not happen for a lot of us, including myself. Bringing my head to my knee is going to be a bit of a challenge, but the idea is to try. And if, as long as I feel a compression of the lower abdomen on the right side, on my upper right thigh, I'm good because I'm feeling the compression, I'm feeling the stretch. So the final posture is only our goal. We don't always have to get into it straight away. So don't get discouraged, let's go on. Inhale, bring our arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down, keep inhaling, take your arms all the way overhead, clasp your hands together, Biceps behind the ears, exhale, fold from the hip. <coughs> Remember to keep your foot flexed, the foot on the extended leg, keep it flexed for two reasons. One, when you flex your foot, you're stretching the back of the legs and that's the idea is to get a beautiful stretch of the spinal extensors. Also, as far as I'm concerned, when I flex my foot, my hands find it easier to hold on to my toes. 
and plus when you're holding on <coughs> especially to the big toe if you know, remember i don't know if you remember josine in one of the earlier episodes you were not there in the first 30 or 40 one of the earlier episodes we talked about nerve endings mm -hmm. there are 72000 nerve endings in our body that end mm -hmm. in the palms of our hands and the soles of our feet so every time you pull at this big toe, it is actually leading to some gland and organ. In fact, there are, these are for eyes and ears, the base of each of these mm. toes. So each of these toes have nerve endings. When you pull it, you're refreshing those glands and organs. Mm. <clears throat> but I don't really want to go into reflexology because that is not my line, it's not, not my expertise, but we'll bring an expert mm -hmm. one day. Now, you should feel a stretch. You feel that, I'm sure. Josiane, you feel that stretch? Mm -hmm. Uh, those who are stretching with us, if you want to experience a sensation of getting your head to your knee, if <laughs> Mohammed, if the mountain doesn't come to Mohammed, <laughs> the uh, Mohammed will go to the mountain. So you can bend your knee and bring your forehead down. <clears throat> that, but don't hold it there because you won't feel the stretch in the back. So now release the knee, bring it down. Inhale, let's come up with a straight back, clasp your palms together. Exhale and release. <coughs> Let's switch legs. Remember in yoga, you always need to balance both sides. You balance a back bend with a forward bend. You stretch on one side, you don't want to forget to stretch on the other side. Having said that, I remember in a school, and I've mentioned this many, many episodes ago. I see, but I would try if I can do this <coughs> this way. Be careful, of, yes. If you hurt yourself, I mean, any part of your body, on this side, make your sure. adaptation. If you've injured yourself, you want to be yeah. careful. Be mindful of your body. And if you've hurt yourself, just be aware of it. Don't don't go too deep into a posture if it will not if your body will not allow it today. Have your left leg extended out in front of you. Flex your foot on the left leg. <coughs> Bend the right leg at the knee. Attach the sole of the right foot to the inside of the upper left thigh. Turn your torso, turn your upper body to face the extended leg. <coughs> Inhale your arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling, take your arms all the way overhead, palms facing in. Clasp your hands together, wiggle your biceps behind your ears. Exhale, fold from the hip. <coughs> also, Josiane, you know the um, this padding under the left, under the big toe? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a left, I think it must be the left. Uh, the left of the right big toe, just under that, this part apparently refreshes the heart. So hmm. I still have to study a little more about the nerve endings, hmm. but I'm trying to recall what I learned. I'm going to bend my knees, cheat a little bit just to get that sensation of touching my forehead to my knee. <coughs> As we fold over, if you find that your knees are coming off of the ground, then you know you need a little bit of help. You might want to sit on a foam block or a little towel. Sometimes on one side, I might find that happens to me. So. I want to be mindful of that. <coughs> Inhale, clasp your palms, let's come up. Keep your arms where they are, and this time we don't need too much help, so just extend the right foot out. So Janu Sirsha was head to knee. Janu is knee, Sirsha is head. Janu Sirsha is head to knee. This posture is called Paschimottan. Paschimottan is bird beak or seated forward fold. Keep your back nice and upright. Try to bring your biceps behind your ears. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, fold from the hip. Flex. Four? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Place your palms over the soles of your feet and push your feet in. Keep your legs nice and straight so you feel that stretch. Oh, I feel that, Josie, and that feels wonderful. Mm -hmm. So your hamstrings get a beautiful stretch as well in this posture. You, we feel the compression of our lower abdomen on the upper thighs. <coughs> and we're getting a beautiful forward fold, so your whole spinal extensors get a wonderful, wonderful stretch. Clasp your palms, inhale, let's come up. We have about three to three and a half minutes, exhale, and release. <coughs> we want to the prone and supine, let's see how far we can go with the uh, seated postures. All right, let's do the cow face, go mukha. Go is cow, mukha is face. Tuck your right foot under your left foot under your right buttock. Right foot goes over the left knee. Make sure that the soles of both your feet are facing the back of the room. Now, you, I do not want any of our viewers to feel discouraged if you can't get your knee right over the way Josian has. But ideally, that's what you want to aim for. You want to aim to get both your knees aligned, one on top of the other. For me, some days I'm able to get my left a little more aligned. 
you know, we all have imbalances in the body. It's good to acknowledge that. One side of my body stretches just a little more. I don't know what that, why that is, but <laughs> it's all about retraining the muscle. So just do the best you can. <clears throat> Turn your upper body. Now, right knee is up. Inhale the left arm up. Exhale, dip your left hand behind your shoulder, so somewhere behind the trapezius. And then try and do what Josian's doing. Try to push your elbow in. Use a little help. We already have props. So you really don't need too many external props. Mm -hmm. Use your hands. Take your right hand from behind and clasp the opposite hand. So clasp the fingers on the opposite hand. Once you made that connection, lift your chin up and hold. It helps relax you to just stay still. Inhale, release the hands, untangle your legs, and let's stretch on the other side. Two minutes. Okay, great, thank you. We have a couple of minutes left. Tuck your right foot under the left buttock. <coughs> Cross the left foot over the right knee. Soles of both your feet face the back of the room. And Josie and I can already sense it. Now I'm getting a little closer to that alignment, one knee over the other. <laughs> you look very comfortable, very nice. Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> Left knee over the right knee, left knee is up, right arm goes up, inhale. Exhale, dip the right hand behind your trapezius muscle, so behind your neck, and then push your biceps in, push your triceps closer to your ears. Take the left hand from behind, clasp the opposite elbows. I'm definitely a little, little more stretchy on this side than on the right side. So hold it, lift your chin up, inhale, and release. Release your arms first and then your legs. Let's go directly into Maha Mudra. The titles are coming up, so we might be able to get in one posture. We'll close with the cobbler. Sit on your heels, feet are flat on the ground. Take your arms behind your back. Clasp the opposite elbows. Keep your back nice and straight. Exhale, fold from the hip. Touch your forehead to the ground. Lead with the chest. Try to keep your buttocks down if you can. Inhale, engage your low back muscles. Let's come up. We're almost out of time. We could just workshop one more posture. Let's do the cobbler. That's a beautiful ending to today's episode. Get into the cobbler posture. What we just did was Maha Mudra, a grand gesture. The cobbler posture, touch the soles of your feet together. So bring both the soles, the soles of both your feet close and bring your feet close to the groin and then push clasp them together and push your knees down keep your back nice and straight shoulders back exhale <laughs>